Okay, so picture Europe, uh, late 80s, right? Cold War, everyone's kind of on edge, and then boom, Belgium. Skies above it, like something out of a movie. Hundreds of UFO sightings. And not just, you know, blurry lights. We're talking detailed reports, multiple witnesses, even military radar tracking these things. So we're going deep on this one, the Belgian UFO wave. What made it so unique? What they see? What does it all mean? Let's find out. It really is something. You've got this global tension thread of like nuclear war, right? And then suddenly it's like, hey, look at the skies over Belgium. Yeah. Strange objects. And this is a stable, usually a pretty quiet country in Europe. Quite a distraction. Yeah. And it wasn't just a couple of things here or there. This was hundreds of reports over months. But there's one night that really gets it going. Yupin, November 29th, 1989. Multiple witnesses, some trained observers. They're describing this massive thing. Silent, triangular craft, bright lights just hanging out up there. And this is key. It wasn't just people seeing things. Civilian radar, military radar, they were getting these things too. Confirming, you know, something was physically there. That detail, the radar, it's what makes the Belgian wave stand out. It went from, did you see that, to we have it on the screen. Like straight out of the X-Files, but real life. And triangular UFOs, so that wasn't really a thing back then, was it? No, not really. Back then, UFO, you thought flying saucer. Right. So these triangle reports, they got people going. Extraterrestrial, super secret tech, nobody knew. Okay, so we got these huge, silent, triangle UFOs flying around. Wild. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there, does it? Other sightings get mixed in too, right? You got it. The big triangle, that became like the image, the icon of the Belgian wave. Hmm. But then you had all these other reports, smaller things, spherical, moving like crazy fast, like impossible maneuvers for anything we could build back then, almost like they were toying with physics, you know? So it's like a mix then. Big, silent triangle to these little things zipping around, almost like they were putting on a show. Easy to think, right? Mass hysteria, people getting all worked up, seeing things. But here's the thing, Belgium, they didn't just ignore it. They took this seriously. Like, seriously, seriously. Full-on investigation into these UFOs. And that's, that's what gets me. Most governments, back then, easy to just say nonsense and move on. Not Belgium, they dug in. Oh, yeah, they weren't messing around. Brought in a colonel to run it, Colonel de Brouwer. What do we know about him? So de Brouwer, his job was to figure out what was real, what wasn't. Radar data, witness interviews, all of it. No agenda, just what's flying around in our skies. And get this, they sent F-16s, fighter jets, to chase these UFOs. You don't hear that every day, like Hollywood movie stuff, but for no, real. It's true. Multiple times, Belgian F-16s up in the air trying to get eyes on these things. Can you imagine? You're the pilot ripping across the sky, and it's you don't even know what you're looking for, really. Exciting, but scary, too, right? Did they ever get a good look, though? Close encounter. Jets versus UFOs. So even with those chases and the F-16s, you know, top of the line, no real answers. Whatever they were, those UFOs were good at disappearing. But even without clear answers, Belgium did something pretty amazing. They were totally open about it all. Hold on, no cover-up, no secret files, men in black stuff? Nope. Actually, they were super open with what they found. Even worked with other countries, sharing data, talking about what they were seeing. And this is Cold War time, remember? Secrets were like gold back then, especially if you thought it might be a new weapon or something. That's pretty wild when you put it like that. So were they worried these UFOs might have been Soviet tech? Like yeah. something that could change everything? I'm sure it crossed their minds. Cold War, lots of paranoia, everyone trying to outdo each other with technology. Mm. But whatever their reasons, Belgium being so open, it's remarkable, even now. They showed how a government could handle UFOs, which honestly, not many others have done since. So Belgium's all in, right? Jets, investigations, the whole nine yards. But it didn't stay just a Belgium thing, did it? This went global. You said it. The Belgian wave. That's what they started calling it. became this whole worldwide thing. Makes sense. NATO country confirming UFOs. That's going to make some headlines. Oh, yeah. Front page everywhere. Not just some grainy photos and a couple people saying, I think I saw. This was, like, official from a country that everyone knew was, well, sensible. Made people wonder. You know, hard to ignore for sure, not just for like the UFO enthusiasts anymore. Right. The Belgian wave. It was like this moment where everyone had to think, OK, maybe there's something out there we don't get. And not just regular folks, even NATO. They had to pay attention. NATO got involved. What they have to do with it? Well, think about it. Cold War still going on. Yeah. If these things were something someone built, could be a threat, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, you've got these things flying over a NATO country that gets into all sorts of rules about who defends what up in space. 
Wow. So this wasn't just some UFO thing anymore. It went way beyond that, touched on everything going on back then. It did. And it didn't just go away when the sighting stopped either. The Belgian wave, it kind of stuck around, changed how people did UFO research, even pop culture. Like, what? give me an example. Okay, so after Belgium, suddenly way more UFO research everywhere. People got into it. It wasn't just, you know, a hobby anymore. Yeah. Scientists, professors, even some governments were like, okay, maybe we need to look into this UFO thing for real. And then there's the movies, TV, all that. Oh, yeah. Anything specific come to mind? How many sci-fi movies you've seen with those sleek triangle-shaped spaceships? That's not an accident. The Belgian wave, it put that image in everyone's heads. Became like the go-to design for advanced alien tech or whatever. So what's the takeaway? What's the legacy of all this, the Belgian UFO wave? Tough to say for sure, but to me it's this. Whether those were aliens or not, it reminded us that there's stuff out there we just don't get. Made us question, be curious. Made us look up at the sky and wonder, you know? <laughs> and maybe, sometimes, that wonder asking those questions is more important than actually getting an answer. Really makes you think. What else is out there? Well, that's our deep dive on the Belgian UFO wave. If you're like me, probably got you wanting to see some of those pictures, read those stories, go for it. It's a wild ride. And hey, who knows? Maybe you'll even see something strange up there yourself someday. Until next time, keep looking up and stay curious.